Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and today we're talking underspins. I'm going to show you guys how we use underspin swim baits, the different styles, the different sizes to consistently catch bass this time of year. It's no secret that this time of year, bass are chasing bait. They've been chasing little bait fish for the last couple of months now, actively pursuing them in shallow water. In some situations that's already ended and they're out deep now. On other lakes, it's continuing on. But bass eat bait fish in the fall headed into winter. The underspin is incredibly effective at catching those fish. So there's no secret that swim baits catch bass, right? Whether we're talking about giant swim baits or little tiny micro finesse swim baits, swim baits catch bass. Pairing them up with an underspin, however, takes it to the next level. Any time that bass or chasing bait fish, any time that they've got them corralled up, an underspin will far outfish a bear swim bait. I want you to understand that. I wanna be clear as a bell. It will always outfish the other. The reason why is that your swim bait looks like as long as you're doing it right, looks like the bait fish you're imitating, right? It looks like a shad or a baby crappie or a baby bluegill, whatever it is that they've got corralled up, you, I assume, have tried to take a bait that will match up accordingly. So you've got your bait that looks like the shad. I'm just gonna say shad because it's easier than bait fish. So this swim bait looks like a shad. If I throw it into a school of 500 shad and start to reel it through there, there are now 501 shad for those fish to choose from. Now, they will give that swim bait some space, so that ups my odds, and I will catch fish on that swim bait. But the moment I attach a blade, and that begins spinning underneath that swim bait, the shad will back away from it. My bait will be a loner swimming amongst all these other little minnows, but my bait stands alone. It's got flash, it's got extra vibration, and those fish will key in on that one. So anytime they've got the bait fish all penned up, whether they're blowing up on them or they're just chasing them subsurface, maybe you see it on your electronics, or maybe you see it with your eyes, like that one right there. I hope you guys saw that. That fish just blew up a second time. He's blowing up on shad. Anytime this is going on, that blade makes you stand out. So underspins themselves, very simple. Throw them out, wind them back. You can kind of twitch them once in a while if you want to, but generally speaking, we're just slow rolling that underspin. The key is knowing how to pair up different baits and different heads, different weights to get different actions. Okay, that's where the technique comes into it. The actual art of going out and fishing an underspin, anybody can do it. Tie it on, throw it out there. If it's shallow, start reeling. If it's deeper, let it go to bottom, start reeling. It's really that simple. This is as basic as a technique can get. Other than getting ready to go. Getting ready to go, you need to pair the right baits to the right heads to get them to do what you want. And that's what today is about. So I've got, I don't know if you guys can see them laying here, but I've got what? One, two, three, four, five, five or six different baits. And then we've got weedless heads, larger heads, smaller heads, and the screw head, which is not actually an underspin, but we're going to talk about it too because it plays in that exact same situation. There are fish blowing up on bait fish just all around the boat right now. This is crazy. This is what happens when I start teaching, the fish know that they're safe and they go nuts. All right, let's jump into this. Let's start with those bigger baits, okay? 
and then we'll we'll work our way down to the little finesse guys. Now, when do you throw which one? In a perfect world, you're going to match up to the size of the bait fish. Hopefully you guys can see this. Those are literally schooling shad swimming alongside my boat. Hopefully you guys were just able to see that. I, I mean, I couldn't cue this up better if I was a professional. It's amazing. All right, let me get this camera clicked back in and we'll go from there. So people always say, well, how do you know what size the bait fish are? I mean, in a perfect scenario, that's how. They literally swim up and show you. Uh, but sometimes that doesn't happen. So I keep an eye on the water. I look for bait fish that are jumping and I try to figure out how big they are. Uh, if I'm catching fish other ways and they're spitting up minnows, I look at the size of the minnows. And if I don't know anything about the lake, I'll start out bigger and just work my way down until I start catching fish. Uh, you don't want to go too small too soon because you can go to a little 2.8 Kitek and you'll blast them in just about every lake in the country. It just plain works. Uh, but maybe you're leaving something on the table. Maybe you're catching smaller fish than you need to because you could have thrown a bigger offering. So let's start out with the bigger ones and we'll work our way down, okay? Uh, we'll do these couple of exposed heads first. My main big underspin is this right here. This is a Blade Runner head, half ounce Blade Runner. I pair that up with a 4.8 or a 4.3 Kitek. It's a full profile, it's a big head. That is my main big underspin, okay? There's only a couple of times that I'm going to vary from that. Uh, if I'm fishing heavy current, like main current Tennessee River, fast, fast water, because that's a flat head, Sometimes the current will push it over and it won't want to run right. Then I'll throw the hog farmer. It's more of a rounded head and it just tracks. Oh, they're blowing up right here. It tracks true. It tracks straight through the water, even in current. Okay. So if you've got current, I like that hog farmer. Otherwise I stick to my blade runner most of the time. If the water's crystal clear and I can't get them to bite it, and I need to go to lighter line. I started playing this year with this VMC, much smaller. In fact, I can flex it with my hand a little bit. A much more finesse hook in that one, even though it's still a half ounce, see the difference there? So with this one, I can drop way, way down and I can throw it on 10 pound line, 12 pound line, even straight fluorocarbon no problem. Whereas this, I'm fishing 12, 15, 17, 20, heavy line. Okay, so just a one-two punch there. Now, as far as swim baits go for these larger, these are the two that I've been throwing. Like I said, the Kitek, and this is a four-inch Largo Shad. I've been so impressed with that bait this year. We talked about it earlier this year. Uh, it was a newer bait that hit the market. And it is just done remarkably well. It's more of a shad shape. So if your fish are chasing actual shad, um, it just seems to work magic for me. Obviously the Kitek is magical. I mean, all over this country, bass just blast on the Kitek, uh, but there's no shortage of people throwing it either. And sometimes I think it gets overfished. So if I start noticing, hey, this should be working and it's not, try that Largo shad it'll go a long way for you. That's a really, really good option. Now that's the four inch. We'll talk about the three inch in a minute, but we'll leave it right there for the bigger heads, except for weedless heads. Okay, so we're gonna talk weedless now. This is the owner flashy swimmer. Five aught, three aught, one aught. And that just depends on the size of the bait that you're pairing up to it, okay? So I'll rig a couple of them for you really quickly, but let's do the five aught. Now here is a trick that's gonna save you a small fortune. This little guy, the screw that's on there, that's an owner CPS spring. That's what that is. That's a size medium. That's what comes with it. You can take these on and off. And if you take that medium off of there, I just twist it off <clears throat> and you buy yourself a pack of the larges and I put that back on its place. 
that will hold up much longer. It will make your bait hold up much longer. So the Kytec 4.8. Now anything smaller than that, you can't do this. Okay, I don't do it with the small ones because it would just tear the bait to pieces, but a 4.8 Kytec will fit. So I put this on this large. Now it barely fits, but you twist that on in there. Thread it through. And then you can skin hook it if you need to. If it's a really heavy cover, you skin hook it. If it's not that heavy, leave it exposed. But that setup right there will allow me to fish right up on the bank. So if you've got a lake that's still got a lot of grass, you can throw this right up in the grass and fish it over the tops and through that grass. Uh, but if your grass has died back, but you've got lay downs, you still wanna fish that underspin, this is much safer through a lay down, obviously, than this is. This is more open water. This is more in and around cover. Same bait, same action, same purpose, different design. Let's do a little guy too while we're at it. This is the little Damiki three inch armor shad. Twist him up on there. This is the smallest of the flashy swimmers. So again, you just choose the appropriate size for the swim bait, right? This is just that little three inch armor shad. But the armor shad is a cool bait. It's made of a little bit more rigid plastic than a Kytec, which means it thumps a little bit harder. So it's more where the Kytec is a big wide kick. This is more of a vibration. And I've been very impressed with that little guy. Now you can fish it this way weedless. It's interchangeable with that small Kytec. So you can fish it this way or you can fish it on the exposed head. But I just wanted to give you an example of a smaller bait on that weedless head as well. So we've covered the bigger sizes, cover the weedless offerings. <clears throat> now I've got some in-betweeners as well as the true finesse. I wanna do this one. The shad that you just saw swim by the boat, they were probably three to three and a half inches long if I was gonna guess. This is the exact thing I would pick up. And when I say that, it is the exact same thing I picked up before this video even started to throw when I saw bass blowing up on bait fish around here. I made a few casts with that exact same setup, but this is a smaller version of the Blade Runner. This is a 3 8 head. And see how it's got that spring on there? Okay, so what we do is we take our Largo Shad and over time you'll get better at gauging the, the distance you need to go. But I kind of guess, I run it down through and I pop it out, okay? That's what I'm up against. Now, actually, I'm gonna go just a hair further before I start screwing it on that spring. I can back it up and get a little more, okay? Now I'm just gonna start to twist it onto the spring and the body will wanna follow. I can just pull it around or if I just wanna go for it, I can just keep twisting and that body will work its way around on its own. But that's what I'm left with. So that spring is completely inside the bait Bait sitting totally straight. And that is great for this size bait, that three inch bait. Again, that Largo Shad is more of a bait fish profile. It's got a really aggressive kick. For this stuff, in a lot of situations, I like it more than that Kytec. I, I can't say enough good things about that bait right there. I've, I've really enjoyed it this year. Now, a couple more variations for you. Uh, and again, all this stuff, I'm gonna link it down in the video description. I'll link the baits by size, and then I'll link the heads to match for each one for you, weedless and regular. Uh, and again, you don't need all of these, right? Your lake probably doesn't have all of these scenarios in it. You just need to pick the one or the two that make the most sense for you so that when you're out there fishing and you come across these sorts of circumstances, you've got the right baits for the job. So check out this one. This is a Picasso single barrel, specifically the two aught hook. So it's a super short, super stout hook. If I'm gonna be around bigger fish, but I still need a smaller bait. 
So say I saw this same thing, small shad, but I saw an eight pounder blow up through them, or I saw a striper come in here and start boiling on them. I need a stronger hook. Look at it compared to the little cool baits that we're gonna talk about next. Way stouter, way bigger hook, but it's not much longer. So I'm still able to put a 3.3 Kitek, a 3.8 Kitek, a four inch easy shiner onto that profile. And now I've got a little finesse. Oh, that was a striper. Wow. Big old giant blow up over there. Cue up this bait right here for that situation. Now I've got a little tiny finesse swim bait with a super strong hook. That hook right there can take a beating. I could hook a 20 or 30 pound striper, and as long as I've got some drag and I'm along for the ride, I can land that fish on that setup. So, micro swim bait, little tiny bait, lightweight, that's a 3 16 ounce, but a gaff of a hook, a really stout hook that can take the beating. Next is the little cool baits. This is the bread and butter true finesse. When I need to downsize, take this little guy, grab a 2.8 Kitek, set that up, and I'm in business. On literally every lake anywhere in the country, that will catch fish. If you need a bite, that will catch them. It just gets them. Doesn't matter where you go. But again, oh, that was a giant blow up. Guys, I am losing my mind here. There's boils going off everywhere. In fact, while we're talking, I'm gonna be rigging this one up. I kid you not, there's that many fish blowing up. Oh, they're right here. But seriously, these little guys will always catch fish. Uh, the downside, now while they will catch giant bass, you're obviously not targeting giant bass, right? So you don't wanna go too small too soon. That's not a wise decision. So that's why we have the options. I'm just gonna keep rigging here real quick. There are so many boils. I'll bet I could throw this over there and catch one of these fish. Hopefully they don't prove me wrong because I'm gonna try while we are still talking. I'm gonna make one cast now and then the next time they boil, I'm gonna be all over them. So we've got one left to go and that's that one that's, that's truly different. That little screw head. All right, they've gone back down. When they come up, we're gonna get them. So this is the screw head. It's a little Mega Mass Okashira screw head. Not an underspin, but same concept. The best bait that I found to pair with that is this three inch spark shad. I also do really well with a 2.8 Kitek, but these two together just seem to jive. It's the same deal, thread it on. and you leave enough space that you're not pushing up against that blade. It still needs to be able to free spin. So see, I left a gap there, but my bait's still straight. That's ready to rock. Now, when do I throw that 2.8 on an underspin versus the screw head? The screw head can go slower, okay? I can get right down on bottom, just barely creep it and that blade will keep turning. If I'm this far off the bottom, it's got enough room for that blade to be turning, and that bait just gets a little shimmy to it, and it just works. Uh, I've been amazed the way it'll catch smallmouth, the way it'll catch spotted bass. It's really an amazing bait, regardless of water temperature. Oh, I missed him. I knew I could get one of these fish to bite. There's just too many boils going on around us here. Jeez. 
one more try. And then I'll refocus my attention for you. Missed him. Those must be small fish blowing up. He's pecking at it right now. Ding, 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 ding. All right, that at least satisfied my, my curiosity for the moment. So that little Okashira, when that guy's spinning like that, and she's got that little bit of a shimmy to it, the underspin will work in the coldest of water. It really will. But when we get so cold that we're just barely creeping bottom, that blade's not turning anymore. I still catch them on that cool baits. I've even got a video of the bait on the bottom where we saw what it's doing. The blade is sort of skimming along on the rocks. It's not spinning, it's just rubbing. But that sound still seems to trigger fish. Just that sound with the swim bait above it. Uh, but this is truly still spinning and drawing attention at those ultra slow speeds. So fall, winter, anytime fish are after bait, throwing an underspin is a really good option. You want that in your arsenal. You wanna match the size of the bait according to the size of the bait fish, if you know. If you don't know, best guess, and then downsize until it starts working. Uh, but you, you really can put this to work for you and you can catch a lot of fish doing it. I'll link again, all these baits, as well as all these heads down in the video description. And I'll link some of the rods and reels we use for them by size as well. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you and we'll talk to you soon.